Bingo. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the weekly Mozilla Webmaker Community Call. Great to have so many excellent names already registered in the Etherpad. We've got a packed agenda, so we are going to get straight to it. Let me draw everyone's attention to line 82 for blog posts and other press and weekly updates you can check out asynchronously. And on line 93, oh my goodness, Katrin goes to Washington. Katrin, tell us about the Mozilla Ignite launch at the White House. Well, the Gosh, truth seven. is that my big belly is keeping me from going to Washington. But the good news is... Catherine's pregnant, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I need a doctor's note, apparently, to actually prove it to Mozilla. Anyway, <laughs> moving forward, Ryan and Mark will be representing us in D.C., as will Will, our newest employee, and very knowledgeable about the project from his past experience. Uh, what, nice. I, I think that Ben was actually going to talk about our ask for help. Ben, are you there? Anyway, if Ben... Hey. Hey. Yeah, can you all hear me? Cool. Yeah, um, thanks for catching this really hard work and um, a lot of work that we've done, the, the site's up, and so we're, we're kind of soft launched ahead of um, the White House announcement. So you can go to mozillaignite.org. And um, we know everyone's extremely busy, um, but the ask we would have for you is that if you have an extra five minutes and you have an idea for a really kind of futuristic app um, of your dreams, kind of an app from science fiction or something that you think we ought to be able to do on the Internet that we can't today, just take a minute to register for the site, um, throw your idea in um, either with a paragraph or a napkin sketch or whatever. Um, it'll be really good if we have some good Mozilla kind of open web public benefit ideas uh, when eyes start landing on this. Yes, we're hoping to impress everyone at the White House with a website that has some good ideas already in it. So any uh, ideas submitted will be rewarded. The reward hasn't been determined yet, though. High fives. High fives, at least. That's it. Thanks. And so, Ben, when you say that you're looking for ideas, basically people just go to mozillaignite.org and they just fill in this, this handy form that we're looking at, describing a, a, an idea for specifically what? For an application that can take advantage of super high speeds? That's right, and not just high speed, but just, you know, what, what's the future of apps going to be? Um, it's a really simple form that asks you, you know, what's a problem? And what's your solution for that problem? And what category of problem is it? Is it a health problem? Is it an education problem? Is it a public safety problem? Um, it takes about five minutes to fill out uh, an idea, and it does not need to be a very detailed technical idea. Um, it can just be a really good idea like, hey, you know what would be great actually is if we could do elderly health care um, using HD video or if we could um, do uh, kind of education by giving kids gigabytes of books in a second. Um, it really does not need to be overly detailed. It just needs to be very imaginative uh, with how we can use the future Internet to solve public problems. And you'll start to see ideas um, percolating in this week. Katrin's been hunting down partners uh, and institutions will be doing uh, a lead there. Also, before we move on, I think we have to shout out Ross for launching this thing in the same week um, that we're launching Thimble and WebMaker. It's pretty impressive. I think um, an applause for Ross. Yay, yeah, Ross! Very nice. Thank you both. Very exciting. And um, Mark, Ryan, please make sure to steal something from the White House so we have a story to tell. All right. Looking forward to hearing the report back from June 14th in the capital of the U.S. Let us move to line 112. Summer Code Party went to Rwanda. We had some learning sessions there. Cliff, are you on the call? And can you tell us about what you learned hosting a Summer Code Party? Star 7 to unmute. I see Cliff. Matt, have we hand shook with Cliff today? Uh, yeah, he uh, he's on the Etherpad. He Maybe have having difficulty unmuting. Um, should we see if we can work that out and circle back to him? 
Let's do that. Well, uh, Michelle, not wanting to catch you off guard, but why don't you tell us how to host a summer code party event? And Cliff, we'll get back to you in about 10 minutes. Cool. Um, can you guys hear me? Yep. No, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks to Matt who's kindly helping me progress. I invite you all to uh, follow along with the, um, the video cast. So we have a delightful visual how-to host a kitchen table um, provided by some familiar faces. And um, yeah, I'm just going to walk. It's, it's a super short and silly fun way to show you how simple and easy it is to invite your friends around your kitchen table and do some fun events. So we'll just click to the next slide. which shows you the ideal setting, um, basically just your table, a comfortable, a comfortable environment with some chairs around it, uh, Wi-Fi, power, snacks, all those things make for a lovely, a lovely environment. Um, and really I think good kitchen table events work well with just like a small intimate setting, so you don't have to get all crazy, but even just like two or three friends is enough. All right, then once you've got your space, you invite your friends to come over. Um, you can kind of warm up, have a coffee, explain why you're there, um, talk about uh, what you'll be doing that day. And um, so at the heart of, um, of the kitchen table events is, is going to be some actual web making and learning. And uh, what we're going to be talking about is using, the, is using different symbol projects. And so thanks also already to the folks in Etherpad, Chloe and team, who are writing recommendations for uh, what symbol projects to use. But um, you know, we're, the host of the kitchen table will explain kind of the setup and then help people find a project that fits their skills and interests. And then you start hacking. And you know it can go for you know 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour. Like the the idea is that it's really flexible and it fits the it fits the vibe of um, of your participants. And then you help each other. So John is helping Andrew here. Um, I think part of the sweet spot or part of the fun is um, actually like looking over each other's shoulders and helping each other when you get stuck. Um, so rather than sitting in a corner and doing these projects on your own, this idea that you're helping one another learn how to make stuff on the web. Cool. We're almost done. Last one. The fun part is when you get to show each other what you made, share your work, um, like kind of circling back and, and showing what you made. Um, and also posting it online. So we're going to have some very nifty um, activity streams and volunteer storytellers who are going to be pulling out the best hacks. So um, in just a few easy steps, that's how you host the kitchen table. Just incredible. Michelle, was that regular clip art? I mean, those are really unusual <laughs> images you have in that guide. <laughs> well, I wanted to get an animated GIF of him, but it was, you know, a bit harder. <laughs> Got it. Right on. Well, um, um, yeah. go ahead. No, I was just saying, if um, if folks have any um, questions or comments about about that, please feel free to drop them in the uh, in the Etherpad and stuff. And and thanks again to the folks giving us suggestions on what symbol projects people could be doing and how. Yeah, and I would, I would like to pause and just invite people in the Etherpad or on audio to sort of weigh in on how well you think that actually does tell the story. Like, does that sound like something you can imagine the uninitiated believing they could do? Okay, please, one at a time. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to take that as an overwhelming yes. Uh, excellent point. Jess points out that it's a bunch of old farts doing a code jam and not the vibrant youth we seek to reach. 
but you know, I, I think Photoshop has a new Youthify filter, so maybe we should apply that. Great Are you calling Gunner old? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to. I do that. Um, Andrew's taking umbrage with my language. Andrew, sorry, you're a young buck, but you are surrounded by the other thing. Um, okay, uh, boy, I touched a nerve there. Apologies, apologies, I swear. Michelle, anything else to add? Any other feedback you would like? This is a very exciting next step in the maturation of this offering. Um, well, I think someone has a good line, a good point on line 162, and we've seen this with some emails we've had from hosts and stuff. That this. Um, can we explain hacking and what we mean by hacking? And so I think we're going to have some stuff coming up in an FAQ and blog post, but I think that's a good point that um, perhaps people who aren't used to us hearing the word hack in the context we're using it, having some of that information would be helpful. So plus one. Nice. Right on. Well, thank you, Michelle. Thank you very much. I'm just double checking that there aren't any. Um, <laughs> Carla, thank you for pointing out the intellectual property implications of youthifying. I very much appreciate that clarification. Um, excellent. Not seeing any other questions, so can't wait until we've got actual lot video feeds of lots of kitchen table things. Oh, and actually, Brett put in an excellent thing in the IM. Um, about maybe show things you could make. I think that's actually a really good idea. Actually, show the screen uh, or some other outcome. I think that's a great, great ad. All right. Thank you all for that feedback. Let us move back up to line 114. Cliff, are we able to hear your audio now? Cliff, coming to us about summer code party in Rwanda. Cliff, are you there? I'm going to try unmuting all lines to see if that helps. Okay, cool. The conference has been unmuted. Woo! <laughs> Cliff, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Fantastic. Cool. Could, could we ask uh, everyone to star seven themselves? Could everybody self mute? Star seven, all of you beautiful people. Star, star six to mute. Oh, star six to mute. I lied. Everyone, please star six. Yeah. It's great. A little chirping chorus of self mutation. All right. Cliff, you can. Thank you so much for your patience with our clunky technology. Uh, tell us about your summer code party, please. Oh, so. <laughs> How many more books coming out, too? Oh. Uh, um, I'm at Lumina, and I don't know if you've tried their raspberry lemonade. It's so good. The lemonade is a little bit. Hey, um, hey, could the raspberry lemonade party self mute? <laughs> I know, they were so nice about it, but now I have had my second glass. Uh, I don't know, Gunner. Wow, this is frustrating. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we come back and Do we have voice recognition? Can anybody pin that audio on someone? We need to take revenge. All right, so yeah, I think we do have to put, go back on mute, which is frustrating. Okay. Before we do, Cliff, are you trying to hit star seven and not having success? The conference has been muted. Sorry, Gunner. I, uh, I prematurely muted all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Gunner is back. Can you hear me? Yes. So, Cliff, are, uh, I guess I can't really ask you, but if you can type in the Etherpad, are you hitting star seven and not having it work? And our apologies for this technology fumble. I'll try to sort it out with them in, in chat, Gunner, and then we come back. Excellent. Well, then we shall move ahead. All right. So um, I am skipping down um, past Michelle's excellent demo to um, the Thimble and Webmakers.org item on line 181. So uh, line 181, Michelle Levesque and Ross, 
take it away, star seven to unmute. All right, I'll just give you a quick one sentence symbol update and then hand it off to Ross. Uh, so we did symbol QA on Thursday, Friday, and right. thanks to the eight mofos plus the symbol team who opened around 70 issues, and the team has already heroically closed 50, that's five zero, bugs since then, which is a simply staggering rate. Um, any new bugs that are filed, you know, please feel free to keep filing them, will probably not get fixed unless it's super, super duper critical until after the summer campaign. So I just wanted to heads up about that. And I'll hand it off to Ross. Uh, okay. So I didn't know I was actually going to be doing anything, but oh well. Fletcher, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well that is good. So, yeah, if you have a look in line 191 of the Etherpad, we have firstly, in a very similar similar way to uh, Thimble QA, is now a little doc which you can read and then hopefully go through. And then very simply, we've got a link to our website which was just updated about five minutes ago, a link to our current bugs and milestones, and an explanation of what bug states in Lighthouse are. So if before you file a bug, if you just have a quick look through there, just so we can avoid duplicates and avoid um, any potential confusions. Um, yeah, have a look at it. Also, of course, let's be aware <laughs> of the, the time limits of scale. So the sooner you can get these in, the more of a chance that we're going to actually uh, fix them. And yeah, Joe, just, just play around really. It's not a, it's not as much of a complex app as Symbol, so hopefully it should just be look around, check that things make sense, check that the searches work for projects and stuff. Though I believe projects are going to be spoke about a little bit later, so this, what I said, might well just be repeated again later. Um, yes, go to make-dev.middlelabs.com and have a play, and let us know via Lighthouse or IRC if it's praise. That is all. Very nice. Thank you, Ross. Looking to see if there's any questions for the webmaker symbol people. Um, so Michelle Thorne is digging the phrase have a play. That is not meant to be in any way rude or anything. That's just a, just a term that I use. Right on. Excellent. Space is open for questions and comments at line 214 in the Etherpad. I still want to know who our Raspberry Lemonade Bandit was, just for the record. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, so a really good question getting put up about the x-ray goggles. Um, comes from David A., I believe. But when do we need to have x-ray goggles in webmaker.org? Is webmaker.org launching at the exact same time as Symbol? Um, who wants to take that one? So uh, that's a question from David. So, uh, I'm trying to pull up the ticket. There is uh, a ticket open. And um, you can probably find it one of the links that Ross just provided to create an X-ray goggles page on webmaker.org, um, as per our reply to your your email uh, last week. So maybe I'll just make sure you're added added to that that ticket. Um, in terms of timelines, is webmaker.org launching at the same exact time as Thimble? I don't know, Ross. Do you want to take that one? Ross? <coughs> Ross, are you muted? Star 7 to unmute. Line 212. Two, two. Excellent. Everyone want to take a look at that link. Line 212. All right. And David Asher found it, and it's all good. 
Excellent. Any other questions or feedback about Thimble and Webmaker.org before we trundle forward? Very good. So Matt, if I'm not mistaken, you and Cliff have successfully communicated in a back channel and you may be able to share out some of his report out. Uh, let's see. Cliff, do you have the power of speech? Sounds like no. Oh, I'll keep working on that. Hello? Can, am I here? Can people hear me? Yep. We, we can hear you. Okay, I started with Star 7 for a while. Um, Cliff is writing to me what he would like to say. So I can speak. Okay. If you would like to report that out, that would be phenomenal. So we were in Kigali, Rwanda, to meet IT students at the GUC. Kigali Institute of Technology, but unfortunately we found them already on holiday, so we only had art students in school. They had no idea what or how HTML works. We thought this was perfect for us to send the HTML to test the Summer Code Party campaign. So we had it all running. We set up an empty classroom in one of their workshops. So since we all were familiar with HTML, we had everyone doing a portion of the intro to HTML. In his words, in his own words on dem and demos. First it was so hectic to get the students to grasp any sense out of HTML tags and code. He also did a demo of Hackasaurus and the X-ray goggles. He's currently still typing. Excellent. Very, very exciting stuff. But I think he can. He uh, the, there is some sort of nonverbal updates on the actual Etherpad. But I think that's the general sense that they um, they were basically, you know, testing out some of the goggles. Oh, here it goes. The symbol didn't work out since they have no idea how HTML tags work. So they were really working on the X-ray goggles first. Um, they had to use the X-ray goggles before getting to the symbol. Which is interesting. Actually a lot of feedback we have in getting on the tool um, that they work well in, in concert with each other. They also wanted us to give them a curriculum, but they didn't have any at the time. Are there any questions I can ask him? I think the, the main the main question, which I, I guess you just answered mostly, just is just like what roadblocks or challenges did they encounter, and you know how could we have helped them? But that so, sounds like um, they were mostly looking for scaffolding or more sort of how tos around specific projects. Yeah, I think they basically are looking for some sort of module type curriculum that they could that could assist them with teaching. Um, and I'm suspecting because Cliff and his crew are, are not traditional educators, they were, they're looking for something that just could help them um, teach these tools. They did a demo of HT, they ended up doing demos of HTML5. Um, waiting for... That would be too funny if that typing was Cliff. Not, not my typing. Um, they did that at the Kigali lab, a lab. Cool. Maybe we can share the symbol release with with Cliff and have him do some more testing and report back. It sounds like it. I'm going to invite him to the learning call to see if he can um, work with us to build out some of the things that he's asking for. Sounds good. Great. Right on. And Cliff, I th Jess, thank you so much for facilitating that connection. And Cliff, you're getting some love over in the, IR, the IM channel on the Etherpad. So thank you so much for that great leadership. Uh, very, very much appreciated. Um, as a point of process, I'd like to ask the Mozilla Learning people to please post the ground rules for their beverage bingo game that seems to be occurring in the uh, instant message channel. Um, and if I say the word scaffolding, does that justify my getting those rules? All right, moving forward, my friends, we have moved well into the 200s. Um, let us, uh, oh, great, my machine's freezing up. Um, yeah, so let us move down to uh, line 227. 
Uh, Matt and Jess, do you want to talk to us about the Summer Code Party New Projects Gallery? Uh, sure. Uh, Jess, do you want to start, or should I start? Or? Um, hi. Hey, hey. Okay, just testing. So uh, we're talking both about the Webmaker Org site as well as the Symbol site when we start our conversation. And we're go we are happy to say that we are going to be releasing in conjunction with the Summer Party Learning Projects, which we have presented on this call in the past, but we are really excited because we have not only projects that we've created as part of the Symbol release um, that are really teaching basic HTML and CSS skills through projects that people can complete and make, um, but we are also expanding that now to projects that partners have developed. So we have projects from the zoo, the London Zoo, the London Zoological Society of London, um, and we have pro uh, projects from a variety of different kinds of, um, uh, of organizations, some from Hive NYC and, and some from that came directly out of the London Learning Jam that we did in conjunction with Nesta. And they're projects that are symbol projects, but we also have projects that are um, popcorn as well as um, kind of DIY recipes that are taking advantage of all of the tools that we have to offer, including Hackathorus, Popcorn, and Thimble. So I'm going to keep it short and let Matt, Matt take it from there, but I'm also open for questions. And I want to give a huge shout out particularly to Chloe for pulling together all of this work in such a short period of time and helping to manage a lot of the, the nitty gritty that goes into the detail and working with partners. Just so the, I guess right the other thing I'll, I'll add is that um, I think this process for Jess and I in terms of like learning how to write these up, what is the, what is the kind of style or the conventions that we want to use for the project section of um, webmaker.org going forward? Uh, and there's a bit of a style guide uh, kind of taking shape in line 241. So at some point I think we'll probably be working with various people in this call to add additional uh, projects to the, to the gallery. So um, there is some early thinking and, and drafting in line 241 around how to, how to write up uh, projects. Um, and something that we'll probably dive a little deeper into in a, in a future discussion is um, it's also been a chance for us to, to test out our taxonomy. How do we make it easy for people, I'll just um, pull up this page of the website and screen sharing. Um, when you land in the projects gallery, you have the ability to filter projects uh, along uh, by four categories. The difficulty, um, topic, and topic is really about, this is where I think we're going to focus um, our like, interest-driven learning. So if you're interested in photography or you're interested in uh, <coughs> animal conservation or what have you, topic is the uh, category we'll use for that. Tools, which are um, basically sorting projects by webmaker, our three main webmaker tools, and then um, skills specific um, kind of web, webmaker competencies. Um, so we're, we're kind of figuring out as we go the best way to make use of those categories. Um, and so there's some uh, early thinking in line 242 of the, of the Etherpad. Um, and just finally to, to wrap up, um, I think one question for the group is what additional projects do we think we want to add over the next couple, couple of weeks? Um, and again, the goal here is just to provide another on-ramp into your various, um, various programs and, and, and work. Um, if there's something going on in one of the uh, sub-sites, whether it's Open News or Mozilla Popcorn or wherever, Project Gallery is really a way to surface that, that work through the lens of what's something that I can make or do uh, quickly uh, as a webmaker. Um, so I guess that's a, we don't necessarily have to answer it now, but I just kind of wanted to surface that as a, as a question. Now that we have, like, as Jess said, the first round of, of Thimble, Thimble projects and um, the Summer Code Party projects basically in there, entered and, and, and done, um, is there any other kind of low-hanging fruit that we may want to add in terms of projects over the next uh, week or two? Oh, and Jess, you were mentioning that if people want to actually help with QA on projects, the link, that the projects themselves won't actually be live until the symbol release, right? Which is 
Right, happening. so the link's right now on the um, WebMaker dev site that Matt has um, put in the Etherpad aren't going to be active until probably tomorrow. Um, currently, you can test the symbol links on the, the symbol dev site that we had put up, um, which I think I did put in the Etherpad, but I'm trying to find which line I put it on. Um, but I will put that in a second in, in the chat so everyone can see. Cool. That's it for us, Gunnar. Excellent. Thank you both. All right. Moving on down to line 264 in the Etherpad. Um, we've got the summer code party, webmaker.org slash support. Ben Simon, what can you be telling us about the support strategy? Yes, indeed. Um, sorry, it's a little echoey. Uh, let me know if I'm not coming through. Um, so on line 277 of, uh, this, of this Etherpad, there's a link to the volunteer sign up um, Etherpad. Uh, right now we have about 26 volunteer slots left to be claimed, so grab them while they're hot. Um, and about, there are only about 10 of us who so far have actually added names at all. And I know there are many more than 10 of us who will be helping out during the weekend of post. So please make sure to um, add your name to at least one, at least one slot, uh, one place to help out. Um, also on line 257, a description of what will be our main support hub during the weekend. Uh, it's not live yet, but it will be at webmaker.org slash support. Um, that page will include a scribble live curated feed of people writing in questions, um, and then it will also include links out to sort of all the different resources as well as all the different ways you could ask a question um, or find questions to answer if you so chose. Um, hey, Ben, I don't know if you saw, there's actually a, a staged version of that page um, oh, great. on line 272 if folks want to have a look. Perfect. Um, cool. Um, but yeah, so I think this is basically just a pitch to please uh, come and sign up. We're you know, starting to get enough people in, but um, certainly need more to make sure this goes well. Excellent. Um, so line, line 276, that is a very good question from, I think that looks like Honey's color, but I'm not sure, of um, if we have emergency docs. Um, but we should uh, make sure to talk about that on our summer call immediately after this one. Um. And so Ben, I mean, so basically, I guess two, you're saying two things, right? One is we need um, help for folks to volunteer. And I guess if people want to tweet this out or um, Let's kind of spread the word. I guess the best link to share is probably the wiki link. And yep, uh, the, the, wiki, the, the wiki has sort of a little more description and is a bit more stable. And then the Etherpad is the equivalent of the sign-up form. You're sort of adding your name, and if you're not staff, so we don't already have your email, adding some contact info. Cool. And I guess the other thing that we just wanted to service for people is webmaker.org/support is going to be the main go-to one-stop shopping for all summer code party support. If somebody needs help and you're not sure where to send them, you send them to lightmaker.org slash support. Yes. Cool. Cool. Excellent. Any other comments or questions? Ben, anything else to add? All right. Fantastic. Um, hey, so um, I am now scrolling down to line 300 in the Etherpad where we have Popcorn and Story Camp looking for a speaker. I was paging Brett in the IM. Uh, Brett, would you be able to give us an update on Popcorn and Story Camp, and or who would you like to delegate this to? I can update if you can hear me. We can hear your beautiful voice. Yay! Um, Matt, are you able to screen share with me? Show the screen. Let me try. One sec. Sorry. Okay. 
How about now? Yeah, it's just updating. Oh, I'm just rejoining the conference as a participant. Can you see my screen? Not yet. How about now? Here it goes. Okay, I've done some login. Matt, can you see it? No. Unfortunate. Um, just give me a sec. I think we should assume it's probably not going to work, Brett. Sorry. Okay. Um, so let me just run through uh, what I wanted to give everyone an update on is the pretty amazing curriculum that has come together uh, over last week um, with Laura from the learning team and Jacob who is driving the story camp process um, and some videos that we edited that actually came out of uh, the BAVAC work last year. Um, I wanted to kind of give you guys a, a rundown of how these videos really kind of explain the whole arc of Story Camp and what we're doing. And so I'd encourage you to watch them. I know it's not, uh, you know, it's not a great use of time on a call like this, but they're really awesome. Uh, they're there really well produced. Is there a link for those, Brett? There's, I don't yeah, see them. Yeah, so that's in line 312. Um, and this is, this is basically um, the staging of the site that is going to be the home of, of Story Camp. So if you click on that link at Story Camp, and then where it says Exploring Web Native Storytelling, just click the Check It Out button there. And this uh, room that should um, end in cinema.html is really the hub of where uh, the learners who are uh, taking part in Story Camp are, gonna, are going to um, walk through the curriculum. And so just to refresh everyone, there's about 250 students now that are signed up um, in over, I don't know, it's more than a dozen youth centers. But 25 youth centers have, have signed up. Um, it, it's really impressive the, the sort of level of, of interest that, that's happening here. And so what we've, what we've staged here is um, really a walkthrough of each week. So week, week one is, is an intro, introduction to the process, and the week will start with a, a presentation from Damien Kulash of OKGo. OK so OKGo OK makes pretty awesome viral videos, as most of you know. And oh, Brett's right screen is now on. Awesome. Um, well, that's weird because I don't see it. <laughs> um, anyway, and then what, what they're going to be doing is um, they're going to be using a template that Kate Hudson uh, produced uh, over the last several weeks, weeks called Robots Invade Every Town. Um, and it's, it's amazing. I wanted to screen share it with you. It's, it's just right in the process of being put together, but it's, it's what we call a procedural story. And the way it unfolds is that um, we've edited together a video that allows students to be able to sort of enter their own, uh, their own hometown and um, edit their own material into the video. And it really teaches a lot of the, the web native concepts uh, that, that we're going to be exploring over the week. Uh, the fall, week two, uh, we're calling the history of media. Uh, and the guest speaker here is Cory Doctor, who's going to be giving sort of uh, his rundown on the, how the media landscape has changed and you know, why the web is really a unique medium. Um, the activities they're going to be doing here syncs up with um, what's on webmaker.org. Uh, the, the DIY that's there is, is the use the pop-up template to remix uh, archival commercials. The, on 326, the third week is remix. And re this, is an ex this is going to be hosted by Jonathan McIntosh, who you know, he actually built the pop-up <laughs> template, and you know him from Buffy vs. Vampire that we showed at MozFest. And in this week, they're going to be exploring a variety of different um, you know, remix tools that are online. So they're going to be using Newsjack that came out of Open News, uh, a gendered remixer that was built at the Open Video Conference. Um, and they'll probably be playing with uh, – they're still going to be hacking on the other templates from the other weeks. Um, the, on 334, line 334, week 4 is the ways of the web. And we'll be lucky enough to have our own Michelle Levesque uh, kicking off this week. And this is really, this is when they start to play with CSS, HTML, JavaScript. And so we, we're going to have them you know, try out Thimble and have the instructors choose a series of WebMaker missions that they want to um, explore and, and, and go through the, the summer code party there. The fifth week, uh, web native storytelling is really 
um, exploring some of these concepts of what we mean, like why is making a movie for the web unique versus just making a linear video? And um, our guest will be Anita Sarkeesian, um, who is a, a pretty fantastic video blogger. And we, um, we have actually created, well Kate has created a newscaster template that I really wish I could screen share with you because it is amazingly kick-ass. And it allows you to create things like um, you, all of the superimpositions, all the background images, uh, everything is created in popcorn, and it's really awesome. It uses all these amazing CSS3 transitions and things. And um, basically, we'll be encouraging students to make their own newscast uh, based on you know inspiration from Anita, and use popcorn to do it. Um, the sixth week is really about planning. Um, we see Story Camp as sort of uh, setting the table for the youth centers to create their own work and to use our tools in whatever way they, they see fit within their local youth center. So we've set aside a week to help them plan that. And so we've brought in two um, sort of industry folks. Um, one of them is named Tommy Pallotta, and he, he was the producer of uh, Scanner Darkly and uh, a lot of other pretty amazing films, as well as Greg Pack, who's uh, actually a cartoonist, and he draws the Hulk. Um, so we'll have them plan out their storyboarding and web-native films. Um, and so that sort of takes us to the end. Um, but just like everyone, I wanted to shout out uh, the amazing collaboration we've had with, with Laura. Um, it's been awesome. The, the popcorn team has been flying through dozens and dozens and dozens of bugs every week. It's been, it's been quite inspirational to see, and it's all coming together quite nicely. So does, do folks have questions about what's here? Super impressive stuff. I'm not seeing anything in the IM. I am paging down in the Etherpad, the EP. Yeah, we are not seeing any questions. Uh, Sunny acknowledges that what you are talking about is seriously awesome, and Pomax is too overwhelmed, really, Brett, to give you a coherent <laughs> question. I feel it, Pomax. Um, right on. Anyway, we'll be, we'll be in channel. I did want to just to mention that, as Jess mentioned in, in one of the earlier uh, agenda items, we will need to think up with you guys around exactly where uh, the DIYs should point to. Um, so, you know, we, we, we're, we're staging that right at the moment, and just, just check back with us, and we'll be proactive about that. Super, super hot. Excellent. Brett, thank you for hopping on and giving us that excellent update. Um, Friends, we have reached the end of our agenda. Uh, let me invite anyone who wants to add an agenda item to place it at line 355 in the Etherpad. I'm also checking the uh, IM channel to see if anybody wants to add there. But otherwise, uh, Matthew Thompson, any uh, perfunctory updates before we draw people's attention to the nonverbal updates that start at line 357? I don't think so. Just a big uh, shout out to Michelle Thorne for all the work she's done, wiki gardening. Um, she's documented it in line uh, 359, but this is badly needed. So huge shout out to, to Michelle. It's awesome. Um, oh, yeah. <coughs> Woo -hoo! Having a look in 376 at source. This is a, a sneak peek at the new open news. Um, Source site, it's cool stuff. I encourage folks to click on the link in line 377. Very nice. Any other orders of business? All right, fine people. We have run our course in a mere 47 minutes on this Tuesday in time. Thank you all for getting on the Mozilla Weekly Webmaker Community Call. And let me get everyone focused on the fact that Summer Code Party kicks off in a mere 11 days. So let us all be pushing love and support to all the great people that are doing all the great work to make that possible. And let us all get psyched to party like it's HTML99. Thank you all. We'll see you next week, same time, same channel, on the weekly Mozilla Webmaker Community Call. Bye. Thank you, Gunnar. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Please stand by.